Now, the tourism industry has lost in excess of 170 million US dollars just in the first month of the coronavirus outbreak in Ghana. The crunch has hit hard on bars, nightclubs and other such businesses which are still restricted. Owners in this space who have no other business uh, are simply looking forward to government uh, for some sort of an urgent bailout. And today we're going to speak to industry players and experts on how they have been affected and how they can bounce back once the restrictions are lifted. Shortly we'll be connecting with Reggie Rockstone, nightclub operator. Uh, Ivy is a bar operator right here in Kokumlemle and Jeff is a pub operator at mile 7. The president of the Tourism Federation herself will be with us. First though, Tourism Minister Barbara oting at today's press briefing. Tourism, hospitality and art sector has been hardly hit by this COVID-19 pandemic because we all know that the sector thrives on public gathering and to overcome the pandemic we cannot gather so the sector has really suffered. The initial assessment that we undertook indicated that for the first four months between March and June um, 2020, we are going to have a loss of about 171 million um, loss registered to the industry or to the country because of the um, lack of operation of the industry. So that is the initial um, loss that we have um, assessed, but we believe that as we go forward and um, we do further assessments, um, we can realize the full impact of COVID-19 on the sector. But we also believe that as the government gives some support to the operators in the sector and they begin also to operate, we may be able to uh, minimize this impact to some extent, even if Tourism Minister Barbara Ting JC. Now here's our WhatsApp number on your screen. So why don't you join us if you operate in this industry, if you have some perspective to share on the subject. Now before we begin our conversation, let's uh, bring you the Tourism Minister's plan for the revival of the sector. A stating effect of the COVID-19 on the sector, government has introduced interventions to ameliorate the impact on businesses and the tourism and hospitality sector is also going to benefit from these interventions. For instance, the stimulus package of 600 million Ghana cities through the NBSSI to stimulate economic activity of businesses in the SME sector, as well as the 3 billion facility for larger businesses will also benefit the operators in the tourism and hospitality sector. Also, the ministry under the Ghana Tourism Development Project which is a World Bank funded project. An amount of $9 million has been earmarked for interventions to boost the tourism industry. And this will be disbursed $4 million to support tourism sites and destinations development and $5 million for tourism enterprise support for SMEs within the tourism value chain. His Excellency the President has also constituted an interministerial committee to assess the impact of COVID-19 on the tourism and hospitality sector specifically and propose a stimulus package to alleviate the impact of the pandemic and protect jobs and ensure the industry recovers post-COVID-19. In order to further support the recovery of the tourism and hospitality sector, the President, in his address the last Sunday, is setting restrictions on the operations of the sector, and we hereby provide the guidelines in that respect for compliance by all operators. In respect of the food and beverage 
industry, comprising the restaurants, shop bars, snack bars, highway rest stops, fast food and coffee and tea shops. They may operate with the following guidelines. The display of no mask, no entry signage, and ensure that all patrons are wearing masks on entry. Mandatory wearing of masks and protective clothing by kitchen staff. Provision of soap and running water and hand sanitizers and disinfectant gels with paper towels at public areas. And the guests should be reminded when entering and leaving to wash their hands as well as use the sanitizers. They are also required to limit the number of guests for dining to 50% of the current carrying capacity of the venue to ensure that adequate spacing for seating and maintaining social distancing of one meter can be adhered to. Regular disinfection of surfaces must be done where it is inappropriate to use bleach, for instance, for surfaces such as telephones, remote control equipment, door handles, um, buttons on elevators, etc. Alcohol-based sanitizers um, with 70% and above alcohol must be used. When you have to undertake a buffet-style service, you must ensure to have, a staff, to have staff at the food station to serve the guests. You must limit communal handling of serving ladles, and you must change the ladles more frequently always leaving these items in separate registered 100% occupancy. Arts and craft dealers at our, NAS, our arts center also <coughs> reported a doubling of their sales in 2019 compared to the year 2018, as well as our car rental services, which registered increased patronage. However, the gains have been eroded by the coronavirus pandemic. In view of the devastating effects of the COVID-19 on the sector, government has introduced interventions to ameliorate the impact on businesses. And the tourism and hospitality sector is also going to benefit from these interventions. For instance, the stimulus package of six 100 million Ghana cities through the NBSSI to stimulate economic activity of businesses in the SME sector, as well as the 3 billion facility for larger businesses will also benefit the operators in the tourism and hospitality sector. Also, the ministry under the Ghana Tourism Development Projects, which is a World Bank funded project, an amount of $9 million has been earmarked for interventions to boost the tourism industry. And this will be disbursed $4 million to support tourism sites and destinations development, and $5 million for tourism enterprise support for SMEs within the tourism value chain. His Excellency the President, has also constituted an interministerial committee to assess the impact of COVID-19 on the tourism and hospitality sector specifically and propose a stimulus package to alleviate the impact of the pandemic and protect jobs and ensure the industry recovers post-COVID-19. In order to further support the recovery of the tourism and hospitality sector, the president, in his address the last Sunday, is setting restrictions on the operations of the sector, and we hereby provide the guidelines in that respect for compliance by all operators. In respect of the food and beverage industry, comprising the restaurants, shop bars, snack bars, highway rest stops, fast food and coffee and tea shops. They may operate with the following guidelines. The display of no mask, no entry signage, 
and ensure that all patrons are wearing masks on entry, mandatory wearing of masks and protective clothing by kitchen staff, provision of soap and running water, and hand sanitizers and disinfectant gels with paper towels at public areas, and the guests should be reminded when entering and leaving to wash their hands as well as use the sanitizers. They are also required to limit the number of guests for dining to 50% of the current carrying capacity of the venue to ensure that adequate spacing for seating and maintaining social distancing of one meter can be adhered to. Regular disinfection of surfaces must be done where it is inappropriate to use bleach, for instance, for surfaces such as telephones, remote control equipment, door handles, um, buttons on elevators, etc. Alcohol-based sanitizers um, with 70% and above alcohol must be used. When you have to undertake a buffet-style service, you must ensure to have a staff to have staff at the food station to serve the guests. You must limit communal handling of serving ladles, and you must change the ladles more frequently, always leaving these items in separate. Nightclub owners, however, did not receive good news um, as their businesses are to remain shut. Reggie Rockstone, uh, well-known Ghanaian, uh, on the showbiz scene also operates uh, a, a pub, a night spot, and he joins us on, the f on, on Zoom right now. Reggie, it's always a pleasure. Good to see you. Uh, there What's you are. Uh, yes, we can hear you quite clearly, Reggie. It's very good to see you as always. Uh, I see you are on, uh, on, on your delivery route. No, I'm done. I'm done for the day. I just, I'm doing Sandra Okobias is the last drop of sexy, ah. sexy watching. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky Sandra. Now, uh, tell us, tell us um, uh, how, how the news has, uh, has been received by you and your team, knowing that you can't operate your nightclubs just yet. Well, first of all, um, we are so blessed. I mean, we have a very unique story because we kind of knew the COVID was about to hit the fan. So we kind of, we, psychologically, we, we were prepared. Also, me and my family literally did our, our own lockdown before the lockdown even came. So we were like a week ahead of you uh, or two. And also, uh, just around that time, I was going through my whole spirituals, and a lot of my prayers was uh, about me selling alcohol. It was clashing with my spirituality. So God answers, works in mysterious ways. One of my comrades makes a, a big uh, troll comment about me selling watching and my watch, it just blows up. And you tell me that's not job. Hmm. And so we don't even need to sell liquor no more. The watch, I mean, we're moving as much as 600 packs a day now. It's crazy. Wow. So it's a success story, but Olua is involved. Hmm. And so I don't have to, I'm not selling booze no more. I'm strictly all about the watch and this rocks watch it to the world. As I keep telling everyone, I'm trying to franchise. I want to be bigger than KFC, all of the above. So I'm on a whole different story now. Yes. Well, that's fascinating. So basically what we're hearing, and, I, and I'm guessing this will be news to many Ghanaians, but what we're hearing from you is that your, your, your spot, spot is not going to be reopening. Is that right? We, we, if, we, if we do, it will strictly be for you to pick up your food you're watching like we're doing now. Uh, we have, we run a delivery service right now, and that's really good. And also, here's another angle to our story. We have become some type of a charity gig now because 
tons of people just ordering food from us to go feed the homeless, feed orphanages, feed street people. So I, we got a double jammy now. It's crazy. <laughs> I mm. don't know. It's, that's God's work. Mm. God works in mystic ways. So we have folks from New York, from yeah. the UK, from Ghana, ordering as much as 300, 200 every day. Mm. I mean, you check on my Instagram, Reggie Rocks on 7-Eleven, you see me feeding all kinds. Of, today, we just fed 150 street kids. Yesterday, we fed another 100 in uh, Tema. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So mm. I'm in a whole new department now. <laughs> Now yeah. tell 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 me, um, Reggie, because even uh, uh, with your Wache business, there is an impact of COVID nineteen. Um, there is a need for enhanced hygiene practices, and you are doing delivery, so you're going into people's homes. Uh, tell, talk to me about that. How are you managing that aspect of um, of the delivery of your service and staying safe? Ed, we were kind of prepped up before COVID hit the fan. And remember, my wife is a medical doc. So, you know, my house is like, it's for Knox when it comes to this uh, COVID. And so, you know, I'm masked up. Listen, I use so much hand sanitizer, my hand is gone. Hmm. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, you know, but of course I'm human. So every now and then I might go somewhere, people want to hug you or, you know, because on, on Tuesdays I do corporate deliveries. Where I take, I, I go myself to drop off the food. And sometimes, Charlie, people just want to hug you. I mean, what can you do? So I leave it to Jaja. But so far, so good. Uh, we all been blessed and we're safe, yes. That's great. Now, Reggie, stay with us. I want to, I want to bring in another pub operator, um, Ivy, Ivy Minda, who runs a pub right here in Kukum Limli. Now, Ivy, uh, hopefully you can hear us now. Um, we are very curious. Uh, we want to know. What do you think of the uh, the new restrictions that the ministry has just announced, the tourism ministry has just announced? I think it's very good, but I want to know if they could do something about it. Because some of us only sell... Can you hear me? Yes, we're, we're listening. Yeah, some of us only sell the drinks, like the mini parts. We sell only the drinks to feed our home. So I want to know if the government can do something about allowing us to operate the small mini bars, so with some measures or something. So at the moment, are you doing any business at all? At this moment, I do fried yam and chicken attached to the bar, but we don't open the bar. We only do the yam and chicken. So uh, how much money are you losing? If you estimate, how much money was your bar making per month? Uh, and how much do you think you've lost to, uh, since COVID-19 brought about these uh, sanctions and measures? For instance, me, I was using my bar to pay my workers because the yam and chicken is not really moving like the drinks I saw here. And I have three to four workers here. 24 workers. So you are making quite a lot of money from the bar. So is it sustainable if, if they keep the lockdown in place for another three months, for example? Will your business survive? No, my business is going to, totally going to sorrow, collapse. Wow. So have you started thinking about that? Have you started planning for that possibility? What's your plan B? Um, not yet, but we can go for everything. Not yet, but we are still on the Yamechev's yeah, business. It's moving a little, but if the drink, if you're supposed to put the pap attached to the drink, it could have been better. Now, Ivy, you made a suggestion. You, you talked about wanting to operate a mini bar. Explain to us what is that concept? What, what exactly were you, were you thinking of doing, Bars, if, yeah. you are, if you are permitted? The mini bars, like, for, in, let me just, for instance, me, I don't get people up to 50 at the same time. 
let's say assume those who get we that get people like 15 at the time 10 at the time or five at the time so you're thinking that perhaps if the um, bars with smaller capacity can be allowed to operate that's what you're thinking Yes. But, but would you be able to control exactly. yes. the public? Maybe today you have only 10 at a time, but if they allow you to open and you are the only pubs that are open, uh, are you not concerned that perhaps people will rush in and you will have more than you've ever had? Um, to me, I'm not really sure because we will have a measure and then I know people will understand. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ivy. Um, uh, let, me, uh, let me reconnect with um, Reggie, but we also have on the line Emmanuel Frimpong, who is the Executive Secretary of the Ghana Tourism Federation. Hello, Mr. Frimpong. Um, just before we come to you, though, Reggie, uh, generally, uh, because you, 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 you play this important role of being a, a social commentator as well. So generally, even though you don't foresee these measures affecting your pub business, how do you think the tourism, or how do you assess the tourism industry's handling of the sector um, since the outbreak of this virus? I mean, brother, it is what it is. It's, we're, on, we're in survival mode now. Survival mode is, you know, me switching from what I was on to now pushing my watch into to the extreme. Um, of course, I had leverage because of my quote unquote celeb stats or you know have you but um you need to I mean every it's all hands on also be a be any yedding also be any yedding what's my say see yet to make I say yeah yeah the BBI shit will be inside I did it's on everybody so you know wherever whatever corner but a parcel your one corner that you're in you need to make it work you know, and that's just what I'm saying. So uh, we we move with the flow and mm. just, you know, be prayerful and be safe and, uh, you know, make do what we have. If there's anybody who can uh, turn Patapar lyrics into philosophy, that's Reggie Rockstone. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> now, Emmanuel um, uh, Frimpong is the Executive Secretary of the Ghana Tourism Federation. Uh, Mr. Frimpong, uh, your members uh, by, largely uh, are affected by these uh, newly announced measures. How are they taking the news? Uh, thank you, Prejo, and um, good afternoon to your cherished listeners. Um, I think it, it is very difficult for our members at this point in time. Um, as we are all aware, the industry is the most hardly hit industry. And if you look at the measures that we are putting in place, not much has been done. Uh, we have had the minister uh, speaking today and we are looking forward to engaging the ministry and GTA because um, we think not much engagement has gone on and members continue to suffer. And just, just some few minutes ago, the Greater Accra Regional um, Chairman for Ghana Hotels Association was in the office and he told me that since last week, he has only made seven city sales, seven cities. Wow. And some having made even a, a, a city sales. So members are really going through some tough time. Uh, we have had some um, measures that the government has put in place. Uh, it's helping a little, but I think there's more that we need to do. We need to engage the members at this point in time because we don't even know how they are being affected. So we need to engage more. We need to engage more. I think the talking is becoming too much. We need to engage more and get on the job. So do you have proposals of your own? Do you have suggestions of your own um, of what your members could do uh, to, to save their businesses without putting the public in danger? Yes, we have. Um, about three weeks, three, four weeks ago, we had a joint committee together with GTA and we put a document that we think uh, we should all look at it. Uh, as I speak with you, it is at the cabinet level. We are waiting for them to come back to us 
and look at the roadmap, what we need to do. But what we keep encouraging our members to do at this point in time is to look deep into themselves and find ways that they can uh, help themselves. Because like Reggie said, we have to help ourselves at some point, uh, even though we continue to wait for the government to come in and support us. But we also have to think outside the box and look at what is it that we can do to help ourselves. Of course, we know that at this point, some of the uh, uh, businesses are not going to survive. There's no two ways about that. We have businesses that are already collapsed. It is going to be extremely difficult for them to come back. But the few that we have uh, still existing, we need to see how best we can support them. Now, you're right. There are businesses that have already been forced to shut down. Others are staring bankruptcy in the face. But the truth is that a lot of this is not in our hands. A lot of this is also influenced by uh, global act activities, like the shutdown of borders um, and uh, the stopping of uh, flights and so forth, which is affecting the tourism industry in a large way. So have you put a clock on it as a, as a federation? Have you put a, a clock on the survival of the tourism industry, especially those that depend so heavily on international traffic? Do you know the date by which we will be facing a collapse of the tourism sector if nothing changes? Uh, we don't have a date. Uh, as a matter of fact, we haven't carried out any a survey uh, and done any research to be specific. But what we are getting from UNWTO, that is the United Nations World Tourism Organization, is that uh, it will take between 18 months to about eight months before we get back on our feet as an industry. But uh, it will also depend on um, country by country what authorities put in place. So we are encouraging the government to look at domestic tourism and probably intra-Africa tourism. That will be the shortest way to get back on our feet. If we are going to rely on international arrivals, then probably we are looking at somewhere between uh, 18 months to 34 or 36 months, which will not help us. So we need to begin to look at domestic tourism intra-Africa tourism, what is it that we can do ourselves to get back on our feet? Mm. Now, R Reggie, you, you have big dreams, you know, for your watchy business. You want to franchise, you want to turn into the McDonald's of Africa. Uh, at the moment, however, you know, with, with the restrictions of COVID-19, businesses are being forced to think small. How do you position your big global ambition uh, in these days of limit and restraint and, you know, uh, well, in these smaller days, how do you dream big? Well, you know, um, there's only a, a dream that comes to a sleeper, if you know what I'm saying. So for me, um, my dream is already, in effect, wide, wide eyed open. Uh, example is, you know, Watch it, it's, it's, a, it's a Ghanaian dish. I mean, you saw, you remember all the hoopla about jollof rice? Well, watch it definitely has no contest contestants from no other country because this is mm. definitely ours. Yeah. So I'm starting from home. Uh, watch it, okay, watch it, I'm there. Yeah. So this is where I am, I'm beginning. Now the next thing is that all human beings gotta eat. That's a sure banker. I don't care who you are. You have to eat. So, Janet, yeah, I think we're in a we're in a safer spot. Also, when I look at the the, the units, the kind of uh, business coming in, I mean, yes, the the booze, the alcohol, the drinks, the pub, that was cute. But today, against my spirituality, and I I think I'm gonna stick with my my watching and uh do for watching what I did with hip life. Hmm. Just make it go up. That's it. <laughs> well, if anybody can, you can, Reggie. Thank you so much. I, I oh. will end him. <laughs> <laughs> Before I go, yes. Um, now here's another thing. I really can't see COVID and alcohol moving together. Get it off your mind. Hmm. Maybe, 
and the Dejuma. Mm. So even if it wasn't about my spirituality, it would just be sensible for me to move in the other way because come on now. <laughs> if any yeah. COVID, it just doesn't work. You know, yeah. so I would be irresponsible to think that I would come back and reopen my pub and social distance. Joe, yeah, cry, cry, be a wase. What's the matter? So <laughs> let's, uh, you know, find other ways to move out there. You know, yeah, it be, but you know, that's it. Ten years in the game, I think I'm ready to sell some food, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well right now. Reggie, we, uh, we look forward to watching you take over the world. Thank you very much for your time with us. That's Reggie Rockstone, um, former operator of a bar. Uh, let's, uh, let's wrap up with uh, Mr. Emmanuel Frimpong and uh, let's look to the future real quick. Uh, Mr. Frimpong, uh, you've got the members and uh, they, they obviously are a constituency. Do you intend to bring pressure to bear on um, uh, opinion leaders and government to, to sway things in your favor and ease some of these restrictions for your members? Is that the ultimate goal? Um, not necessarily uh, bringing pressure on authorities, but we want to engage them more. Uh, this morning, the minister mentioned some package that is supposed to be for the uh, industry. And we want to sit down with them and look at what are the modalities, because often you hear a certain amount and uh, the money is this best and you don't know where the money goes. So we want to engage them make sure that our members benefit from the said amount, not that it, it goes somewhere that it shouldn't go. That is what we want to do going forward. Where should it go, though? I mean, as, an, as, an, as, as a collective, which businesses do you think need this money first? Well, um, if you look at our federation, we have about 30 trade associations. We have the hotels the chefs, the tour guides, tour operators, uh, various restaurants, about 30 or trade, different trade associations. So we need to look at which of them, because if you look at the tour operators and the tour guides, they rely more on international arrivals. So even if you give them money, certain amount of money now, they might still want to rely on uh, people coming in from outside. But the hotels, the restaurants, what can we do to help them to get back on their feet? What is it that we are supposed to do so that people begin to think of staycation? People begin to think of patronizing uh, hotels, not looking up to international arrivals. So we need to sit down, probably do a research or a survey and know which of the associations or which of our members will need immediate help, support and what is the type of support that we are supposed to give them for some of them probably what they need now is retraining capacity building something we need to sit down and find out what is it but definitely the money should come to the industry Emmanuel Frimpong thank you so much for your time uh, Mr Frimpong of course is the executive secretary of uh, the Ghana Tourism Federation.